Checking back in. What do you think of the trip so far? Another successful mission. We run missions. Got all the poles cleaned up. Supporting local business out there. Checked in with Barisa. She got everything nice and cleaned up. Packaged in. Everything's still frozen. Know what time it is. Big shout out to Brisa. Fish processing. Got us right. Nice thick packs. Yellowtail. You can see. Nothing like a completed mission. We ended the trip with 140 pounds of yellowtail and about 50 pounds of grouper. See you guys on the next trip in May. What's going on everybody? It's your boy Hellboy and I'm back from our trip to Bahia de Los Angeles and I have the final conclusion and update of the trip for you guys. Um, I've been really busy with all of the content, all of the editing, all the content that we, we got along the way there, um, making sure that everyone that watches my content knows how to get there from the journey from uh, California to Bahia de Los Angeles uh, using landmarks along the way. I wanted to start by thanking my guys down at Anglerware for all of the amazing gear that you guys have given me and set me up with uh, to go down there to do uh, great work. Let's just say great work. So they gave me some hats. I have some new shirts, uh, new face masks, things like that that help you uh, during the fishing trip. So let's first start off about the journey. Okay, we started the journey from here at midnight. So we load up around 11, make sure we have all our passports, make sure we have everything, go down the checklist and we head out at midnight. We, that puts us at the border um, around 5 a.m., 4 a.m., 4.30, with one gas stop at uh, Calixico, uh, Mexicali, right before you cross the border at the speedway. That's where we like to gas up, use the bathroom, stuff like that, get a nice strong cup of coffee for the rest of the journey uh, before we cross over. We cross over around five o'clock, get our passport stamp or our visa cards, whichever way you want to go by it. And we head out. The town is still asleep. There's no one in the street. There's no traffic. There's nothing. You can go straight through. Uh, that'll put you in San Felipe for your second gas stop along the way um, around 7 a.m., 7.30 a.m. where you can gas up, use the bathroom. There's a 7-Eleven. You can get um, you can get uh, coffee. You can get repellent. And things that you lost or left behind, you can find it there at that 7-Eleven. Once you're gassed up there, it's a straight shot through Gonzaga Bay uh, to Bahia de Los Angeles after you make the turn onto the one. Now the road was damaged during the last hurricane, 
but it's all new blacktop and there's only one section of the road that needs to be repaired and they're reworking on it now and that's the bridge. It's like a half a mile detour um, to get around the work on the bridge. Easily accessible without a 4x4. Four four. So don't worry about that. Uh, you don't need a 4x4 four four to go. Uh, you can just, you know, get something that's fuel efficient because you will have gas stops that are far between each other. So uh, keep that in mind. What I like to do is as soon as I get into town, I like to gas up at the gas station on my arrival so that I know I have a full tank for my departure and something like the town running out of gas and stuff like that uh, has you stranded. So gas up on your arrival. Don't be lazy. Gas up on your arrival. Always have cash. They have more and more places that take card now. So use your card at the restaurant. Use your card at the hotel. Use your card. Save your cash for your boat captains, for tips, for other things, souvenirs. Keep your cash for that. Use your card for hotel purchases. That's the best way to go about it. There is no ATM in town. There is no bank. That is how you have to go by it. You know, this place is still, uh, is far out there, but it's reachable. And it's, um, it's a great fishing destination. A lot of people are deterred because of the distance and the no cell phone service and stuff like that. But there is Wi-Fi at the hotels, at the restaurants, and more and more people are getting starving. So you think about that. So let's start about, let's talk about the first day we got there. We checked into the hotel at Los Vientos. Amazing hotel, accommodations, beautiful. Beach access, pool, great restaurant, great bar. I, I can go down the list. The people are amazing. This place is the place you want to stay. You want to stay at Las Vientos. I stay there all the time. That's where you want to stay. Okay. Um, we checked in, got our rooms ready, dropped off all our luggage, everything, and we headed out for a half day. We met up with Captain Misael Martinez of Fish Arm Sport Fishing, and we went with strictly swim baits and surface irons to go fish Cabrilla in the shallows at the islands. That was the target. It was, um, we mainly focused on casting in tight, uh, close to the banks, and trying to lure the, the uh, leopard grouper out so we can uh, catch a few of them. I used my Rapala x wrap and this one is a Magnum Stick 17. This is pink, UV, has a UV glow to it. This worked well. I caught my biggest cabrillo on this. Caught my biggest cabrillo on this. You also want to take some of these. This is a current sniper, buildless, but sinks. It's sinking. It's called a Shimano stick bait is 140 grams. You also want to get the surface floating with a bill so it can dive about two feet under the surface. But when you stop the retrieve, it floats. This is a great one. All of these lures, you want to upgrade the hooks. These fish are not lightweight. These fish are strong. They will straighten out these hooks. They will straighten out these hooks. Last but not least, Hydro Minnow, 170, multiple colors. Mint was getting hit good as well. These, these, these are essential. They do hit 
the surface on them. They're not shy sometimes, depending. But when the fish are finicky, they hit these lures the best. These lures are the best for them when they're finicky. Uh, take a solid spinning setup. Don't be skimpy. Spend the money. Buy it. I think a great, decent price spinning setup would be a pin slammer um, reel. That that is uh, your cheapest avenue, I would say. Other than that, the price goes up. So day one, we caught about 30 Cabrillo. We released about 15. We kept 15 for our lunch and dinner uh, for the rest of our stay. As they do cook what you catch, if you would like that. They do have whatever else uh, you want to order from the menu. Day two, the wind was up, so we stayed close. We fished uh, uh, pinto bass. We fished rockfish, uh, as well as yellowtail. Uh, we did good there, too. Uh, the pinto bass came in handy on that day. Uh, we caught a lot of pinto bass. Was, and they are the best tasting fish out there, I believe. The pinto bass. They just, you know, decent, you know, eight, eight pounders, six, eight pound fish. But they taste amazing. Um, day three was war. I repeat, day three was war. The birds, as far as you can see, the yellowtail on the surface, you couldn't bottom fish if you wanted to. The yellowtail were everywhere. They were eating the drop. They were eating uh, knife jigs. They were eating surface iron. They were eating swim baits. They were eating everything. But the go-to was a taddy, or salads for a surface and I also tried out this lure that has been in my bag for about seven years a Yazuri Hydro Monster Shot 125 this lure the fish were eating it on contact as I cast it it land, they engulfed it. It was a, it's a little bigger than the size micro bait that they're eating. And this lure has weight to it. So you can cast it pretty far and you can get into the zone where the fish are on the surface feeding underneath the birds. Great lure to have. I will be looking for more. Um, second, application that killed them really good was I have this Megalodon 609 and I had it paired with uh, Oshia Jigger uh, 4000 my high gear and I had West Coast Jigger jig 420 grams that I was dropping down the water was about 400 feet to 600 feet but the fish were in the 200 feet of water column. So you want to drop through the fish and speed jig through them. That's how you're getting your best bites. I like to tie my line to the ring on the hook so that as I'm jigging, the jig can move freely as I, if I get hit by a yellowtail, I'm direct tied to the hook so I'm fish fighting the fish I'm not fighting the jig and the fish and it's not shaking the jig and able to get the hook out so the jig won't work against you in the middle of a fight but big shout out to West Coast Jiggers my guy James down there and Mike they always look out for me always get me set up right so when I'm in the zone I'm killing fish I appreciate it. Um, another thing. Be sure you have the tackle you need. 
their tackle shop is not up to par. So all of this stuff, you need to have it with you. If you need somewhere to go to find this stuff, go check out Best Tackle. It's off Rosecrans in the 405. Um, Dina and Sky, they'll take care of you. Make sure that you're good to go. Go, go, go check them out. That's Best Tackle. Go check them out. Um, I was fishing the heavy knife jig, a hundred pound uh, Max Quattro to a hundred and thirty pound very Voss uh, shock wheel. A big shout out to uh, West Coast Jiggers too. They put me on that very Voss uh, shock wheel. Very good tying, strong line. Great. The fish would not shy to bite it. I did have a couple casualties on the hooks. So you want to upgrade these hooks. These hooks, you want to upgrade them. You catch big grouper, they will bend them out. That's the casualties. Um, what else? Um, we ended the trip with about 225 pounds of fish. Uh, we got fish processed at Parisa. Uh, she is a great uh, connect to have down there. You can drop your fish off on the way back from the dock and she will process it, vacuum seal it, freeze it, and have it ready for your departure. That is something that you need to keep in mind. Parisa, remember that. She's very active on social media. Shoot her a message. Let her know you're going down there. Take your fish to her. She will appreciate the business and she'll take the good care of you. Great, great customer service. Great uh, work. Another good thing that I wanted to put out there uh, as a tip to people, you gotta understand this is a small town. A lot of the businesses are surrounded around us going down there. So support all of the businesses. Don't stay in your bubble and eat in one restaurant. Go share the wealth. Go eat at a different restaurant. You know, go meet some other people. Go shake some hands. You never know. The hands that I shook when I was a guest of somebody else that used to go down there a lot, they took me. I shook hands with some of the people that are now their kids are out there. So I know their parents. So it's important that you make these connections so that when you go down there, they remember you, their parents know who you are, they will take care of you. They, you are a guest. Keep that in mind. Uh, other than that, we had a safe journey back. Everything went smooth. Um, everyone went home with a decent amount of fish. Uh, and um, I was fortunate enough to have my birthday down there, catch some fish on my birthday, have a beautiful lobster dinner at La Vientos uh, for my birthday dinner. And uh, it, was, it was great. It was a great time. I got to fish with my wife. I took her down there. Uh, she caught some yellowtail. Uh, she, she actually took the majority of the footage, so she was a camera crew. So uh, if you like the content I'm putting out, please like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, Hellboy. 